but my body was like, hey, we're just gonna throw one more thing in the mix. And that was sores, painful, painful sores on my vulva. What fun. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I thought that there was only going to be like one more episode of this series of the Hormone Diaries all about conception, pregnancy, birth and postpartum and that that would be all about intimacy and relationships and sex postpartum. However, my body had other plans and so guess what? You're getting more episodes to go through all of the shenanigans. <laughs> that my genitals have been up to in the last few months. And oh boy, is it a wild ride of symptoms, but then also medical bureaucracy. Our favorite here. So I really thought that I had enough to worry about post-birth with all of the changes that my body was going through with having a C-section and the recovery from that, the fact that my uterine lining that had been present holding the baby like in place for nine months was shredding and I was having like a two, three week long period and just bleeding constantly. And then of course also looking after a newborn and trying to breastfeed, like there was obviously a lot going on, but my body was like, hey, we're just gonna throw one more thing in the mix. And that was sores, painful, painful sores on my vulva. What fun. <laughs> So let's dive into this very, very fun video all about what the fuck is up with my vulva and how I went about figuring this all out. So first up, the symptoms. So I'm gonna do a really bad job now trying to explain where these, <laughs> oh wait, no, I've got, I've got vulva things. Okay, excellent. My trusty vulva puppet. I knew that the extortionate amount of money I spent on this would come in handy. So we're gonna give this our best shot. Basically, the outer labia bits, you've got the bits where the pubes grow, like on the outside of your lips, and then you've got like the inside of your outer labia. So I'm not talking about your inner labia, I'm talking about the inside of the outer labia. Does that make sense? So this kind of bit here, there we go. We're all on the same page here. We're all thinking about my genitals collectively. Excellent. So basically, a few weeks post-birth, I started to notice that I was getting some painful sores in that area on my vulva and they were really sore to the touch. Sometimes if like my pee got on it, that would really sting. And also like wiping after going to the toilet was also really difficult. So I had to do lots of like dabbing, very careful dabbing. So after maybe a few weeks of having these sores and them not going away by themselves. I was like, okay, this is getting annoying. These are really painful. I'm just not happy. My vulva is not happy. This is not a good time. So I booked an appointment with my GP. And that leads us to the herpes saga. So I go to my GP around the end of June. So Rowan was born at the end of April, just so we can figure out this timeline. And the GP took a look at me and was like, you got herpes and gave me some topical antiviral medication. She also told me to book an appointment at a sexual health clinic because then they would actually be able to do a viral swab and do a proper test for herpes. Because if you didn't know, you can't actually test for herpes unless you are showing symptoms because then they take a swab from where the sores are and then they can test that. So if you're asymptomatic, which a lot of people with herpes are, most of the time you can't actually test for it. The other reason why she wanted me to go to the sexual health clinic was because she couldn't prescribe me antiviral oral medication because of the unknown side effects of it when it comes to breastfeeding. So the antiviral cream that you just like put on your vulva or like put on where the sores are was fine because it was like localized and only in that area and less likely to be absorbed into my blood and then passed on to my baby. And so she was like, maybe people at the sexual health clinic will know more detail 
about medication and breastfeeding when it comes to herpes. That was a fun conversation with Dan, but luckily your girl is a sex educator. And so it was actually really fine talking with Dan about like, hey, so the GP said I had herpes, which means you probably have herpes too. But that was actually like a really fine conversation. And I think because the two of us aren't planning on breaking up anytime soon. We were just like, cool, fine. This is just our life now, that's all right. I know there'll be some people, especially because there is so much herpes stigma out there who will be thinking, oh my goodness, this means one of you has cheated on the other person. But in fact, you can have the herpes virus and it be dormant and you be asymptomatic for years, like who knows, until something triggers an outbreak. Some people might get an outbreak straight away as soon as they contract the virus. Um, for other people, it might take a lot longer. And so in my head, I was thinking, well, I've just gone through childbirth. And so, you know, one of us had this before we got in a relationship. Now we both have it and I've just now had an outbreak. That was kind of our thinking at the time. Before you start speculating about our relationship. So of course then I booked myself an appointment at a sexual health clinic and I was seen by a sexual health nurse and literally one of the first things she said to me was that doesn't sound like herpes. Just from me explaining to her, she didn't even take a look at my genitals at this point. She was like, that doesn't sound like herpes. GPs have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to sexual health. And I just laughed honestly. She was very bold and also was like, wait, you're not a GP, are you? And I was like, no, don't worry. <laughs> so she did take a look at me and did a viral swab. However, this was like a good few days later, I'd been using the antiviral cream and the sores had gone down a bit. And so she did the swab, but she was like, mm, there's not really that much to swab. But still, the test did come back negative. So no herpes, it wasn't herpes. So what is it then? Part one. So yes, using the antiviral cream, the sores did go away. Is that because it was actually herpes or would they just have gone down anyway? Unsure. However, I then got really ill. Unsure what it was, maybe COVID, but me, Dan and Rowan were all super ill headache, fever, not fun. Probably one of the worst weeks of my life. And when I was ill, the sores then came back. What's that about? And then I was just trying to do my own self-management. And so I started wearing Dan's loose boxes to try and like get some airflow and have like less material, like rubbing up against my vulva. Uh, and that definitely helped. The symptoms then went down again. But then we were hit with a heat wave and they just came back again. So these sores were just like coming and going for weeks and weeks. And I got to the point where I was like, okay, it isn't herpes, but it isn't going away. I need to go back to the sexual health clinic and try and find some more answers. So I booked myself another appointment. And that brings us to the sexual health clinic round two. This was around the end of July and this time I saw a sexual health doctor. I think they were a registrar registrar. She did another herpes swab just in case the first time my sores were in fact herpes but had been reacting the way that they should have been to antiviral medication and so it was like too small to like come up on the swab so another herpes swab. But ultimately after explaining like all of the symptoms and her taking a look at me she was confused by what it was. She was like what is this? Not seen this before. Another thing that came up was that it could be vaginal or vulva ulcers. This is something that does have a correlation with Crohn's disease. Now, I don't have Crohn's disease. I have its sister. Are they sisters? I don't know. Ulcerative colitis. But since Rowan's been born, I have had a lot of inflammation in my rectum. And so with there just being like lots of inflammation in that area, it was like, oh, could this be ulcers and connected in that way. Luckily for me, I had an appointment with my gastro consultant very soon after that appointment, asked him about it. He was like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not that. So that train of thought came to an end very quickly. But back to the sexual health doctor, she then prescribed me some caniston, which is like a very low dosage steroid 
cream. This is also used for thrush, and so, you know, I was having a great time putting steroids on my vulva and also showing steroids up my bum. It's just like a very steroid heavy area down there currently. She told me to use this for seven days and then she was also going to refer me to a sexual health consultant to kind of help me get some more answers and see someone with a bit more expertise. So I did use this for a week and there was a massive improvement, but it wasn't 100% gone. And then I was waiting waiting for this appointment. And as I was waiting for this referral, obviously the sores got worse, yay! When it comes to steroid treatment, there's usually a lot of kind of like rigorous, this is how you should take it and this is how you should like wean yourself off it, especially more so with like oral steroids, which I've been on a lot throughout my life. So I was a bit nervous using this again without like the doctor's permission. Cause I, I read the leaflet and the leaflet was just like, use for seven days. And then if your symptoms persist after seven days, talk to your doctor. And I was like, well, I can't right now. But I did end up using these for another seven days because I was a desperate, <laughs> like, Pain in your pants. There's something about it that just means that you can't like fully engage <laughs> with what you're doing. I mean, any kind of like pain, I guess, that your body is going through and then you can't like be present, you can't fully commit to a lot of things you're doing because you're just like, this fucking hurts. <laughs> but finally, I got my referral and I went to see the sexual health consultant. So this was around mid-September, so about six weeks after the initial referral. And guess what? More herpes swabs, this time a thrush swab as well. I forgot to mention that the last herpes swab came back negative and then this herpes and thrush swabs also came back negative. So fairly confident now that it is not herpes. She kind of suggested that it might be a skin condition and then she also prescribed me some harder steroids. What is this? Umovate cream. Maybe similar to the other stuff, but I think it's just like more steroidy. And she gave me a bunch of other stuff too. So I kind of had a bit of a treatment regime going on. And she then referred me to the genital derm consultant, which, oh my God, what a title. Genital derm specialist, love it. So they specialize in like skin conditions of the genitals. But this was my genital health routine. So every night for two weeks, I would put this on my vulva and on the sores. And then the two weeks after that, it was every other day. And then for two weeks after that, it was once or twice a week. And that was kind of like how she recommended that I use this. She also gave me this, Hydromol. So this is basically a super basic, shower gel. I mean, you can use it for other things, but that's essentially what I've been using it as. It's a bath and shower emollient, a dispersible bath additive for dry skin conditions for use in the bath or shower. Yeah, so I've been using this instead of shower gel for around my genital region, basically completely unscented and all of that kind of stuff. So it's like safer to put around that area. And then she also recommended that I get this, which was easy enough to buy in boots, which is epiderm ointment. I think it's just kind of like a moisturizer, essentially. It says that it's developed by dermatologists and for eczema, um, psoriasis, dry skin, fragrance coloring and SLS free, suitable for all ages, including babies. So this I've been putting on daily after I have a shower. And guess what? The sores have gone down. So, what is it then? Part two. So is it in fact a skin condition? Who knows? Because the symptoms went down, is that because of all of these new creams and ointments that I'm putting on it? Or is it because the weather is cooler now? We're out of the heat wave. I'm not ill anymore. Or maybe my hormones postpartum have like settled again. Like, I don't know. Also in this time, I went to go see a pelvic floor physiotherapist for something else, which will be a whole other episode of the Hormone Diaries. But I thought I would also mention this whole saga to her as well. And she was like, has anyone mentioned to you estrogen? And I was like, no. <laughs> she thought it might be 
dryness due to low estrogen because of breastfeeding, because breastfeeding can make you dry up down there. And then when you're dry, you're more prone to kind of like cuts and sores and just generally less protected from moisture because you don't have any of that moisture. And so she recommended something called Vagifem, which I think as of recently you can get over the counter, but you can also get on prescription. And so I looked it up and it's like an estrogen suppository that you pop inside your vulva. All of the branding is very much that it is for people going through menopause. I was like, ah, oh, that makes sense. But I didn't go down that route just yet as I was waiting for my next referral. And by mid-October, I was seeing the genital derm consultant. Like I said, at this point, most of my symptoms had cleared up, but the doctor still asked if I wanted him to take a look. And you know what? If I am in a room with a doctor at an appointment that I have waited for for a really long time, and there's something with my vulva going on, then I am dropping my pants and I am getting that expert to look at my genitals so I can get some answers, even if there is a chance that they might not be able to see anything but he could. He actually said that he could see where a sore was and that it had healed, but that it was like still there and not like 100% gone. And that felt very validating of like, okay, yes, like something is working. There was something there. It is now healing. Excellent. I'm also coming towards the end with my regime with my steroid cream, but he said that I could continue doing it once or twice a week and that shouldn't be a problem at all. And if symptoms ever like come up again, then I can go back to the regime of every night for two weeks, every other night for two weeks. So that's really handy. Obviously I only use a tiny bit at a time and I have this whole tube. Hopefully this will last me several months if needed. And then, guess what he suggested? He said that it might be an estrogen deficiency and that I should book an appointment with my GP to get a prescription for either a suppository or a gel or whatever it is that they want to give me. It's kind of like all the same, just like different methods, I think. And so at the time of recording this, I actually have that GP appointment <laughs> this evening. And so we'll see. I'll maybe get some estrogen suppositories to help with my estrogen deficiency. Why hello, Hannah from the future, having just finished a pumping session, here to update you on that GP appointment. So the GP asked if I had any notes or anything from the sexual health doctor, and I didn't because I did ask the sexual health doctor about passing on notes to my GP. But he was like, oh, it's all in a confidential system, so I can't do that. And then I didn't think to ask slash he didn't suggest him printing out my notes with my consent so I could hand them physically to my GP. So the GP's at a bit of a loss and just having to take my word for it about like, can you give me some estrogen, please? And then he looks up what he would, in theory, prescribe me. And all of it is like, nope, not with breastfeeding. And so he's just like, well, I don't want to give you these. And I'm not a specialist enough to know what alternatives that there may be. So can you get back in touch with that doctor that you saw? That I'm like, oh my God, it took me like three referrals to reach that person. Like the only phone number I have is just like the phone number to all of Sexual Health London, like their bookings line. Ah! So that was fun, but the GP did give me his email address if I could get through to this doctor to then pass on that email address. The admin, the admin. Anyway, so I call up the Sexual Health London like bookings line and she's like, oh, I can't get those notes for you because confidentiality and all that, you're gonna have to come in for another appointment. <laughs> no, but she was really lovely and she was like, oh, I could give you the phone number of the like secretaries of the doctors. So they're like one step closer to the actual medical doctors. And I was like, yes, please give me that number. And then that person that I spoke to on that phone took the email address of my GP, took my email address, and I explained the whole situation. And then actually, within an hour of that conversation, the doctor emailed me and my GP to say, this patient can continue with the steroids. I was like, that's not what I was asking about. I wasn't asking about the steroids and breastfeeding. We know that that's fine. Like that was, we, we'd done that. And then I replied to the email to be like, 
yes, but you recommended estrogen and that's not okay with breastfeeding. So what do you suggest? And then he replied again to say, don't worry about that. Put that on pause until you're done breastfeeding. But if I'm done breastfeeding, will I not have an estrogen deficiency anymore? Anyway, I'm calling it quits. I'm done. I've got my creams and lotions and things and we're just gonna see how it goes from here. So what is it then part three? Unfortunately, I can't give you like a specific name of a condition that I have that has probably caused all of this hoo-ha, but it's likely a mixture of all of these things happening in my body at once. So we've got the post-birth hormones just going crazy, like who knows what those things are up to, all over the place, wreaking all sorts of havoc. Breastfeeding, which causes low estrogen and vaginal dryness, which just makes that whole area more prone to cuts, sores, and scratches. The fact that I was bleeding for two, three weeks straight and wearing pads and underwear that entire time. Like my vulva is not used to having all of that contact. Like I normally go completely naked at night, let my vulva breathe, but instead I was having to wear underwear and pads like all day, all night. And it is very possible that that triggered some sort of unhappy reaction in my vulva. The heat wave, just like how hot and sticky and sweaty it all got down there. Mm -mm, not a fun time. And then obviously on top of that, like wearing tight underwear and like, even though I was wearing like cotton underwear, it's tight, hence why the loose boxes really helped. And then some kind of inflammatory autoimmune response, which would make sense as to why steroid treatment worked. Also, your girl has another autoimmune disease. So like, who knows what on earth is happening with my immune system. Other things could be triggered left, right and center. Who knows? I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a doctor. This is just me and my body. <laughs> So there we have it. That is the journey that I have been on with my vulva for the last like six months. It has been rather chaotic and frustrating. I feel in a good place with it now. Like the symptoms are gone, they're under control. I've got my steroid cream, I've got my ointment. I need to figure out where I can get more of this, to be honest, because this is like running real low. Hopefully we'll be able to find that somewhere. As a lot of you will know, and as I am also well aware because of having a chronic illness, one of the most frustrating things on top of the actual like symptoms that you have and like the pain that you have is just the constant like admin and self-advocacy that you have to do in order to get access to healthcare. There was so much like navigating, calling up at the correct time so that you would like get through and not be on the phone for like three hours on hold or miss that day's appointments. The Tories have slashed so much funding that sexual health clinics are really under-resourced. And so the phone lines are like only open for like certain times and you have to call up like that morning to get an appointment for that afternoon or something. It's just, it's so tricky to navigate. And if you don't have flexibility in your time and in your schedule in order to one, be on the phone and then also like attend a last minute appointment, then you're gonna really struggle to get access to the healthcare that you need and that you deserve. I was really lucky with the fact that I was on maternity leave for a lot of this and then also working part-time. So I had some flexibility in my schedule. Like at one point I got a text like, like that morning to say your consultant appointment, the one that I'd been like waiting for for weeks was gonna be that afternoon. And I had to work out with Dan, like childcare with Rowan because we had somewhere else that we needed to be. And I would be quicker getting there and back without Rowan if I just got a taxi. Like luckily Dan was working from home that day and we managed to make it work, but like, oh my God, I was not gonna be like, hey, can we move this appointment that I just managed to get? Also the way that they text you about the appointments, there's like no option to rearrange. Like how do I, I'm like staring at this text being like, your appointment is confirmed. I'm like, cool, great, what if I can't make that? I also did bring Rowan to a lot of my appointments, like pretty much every other one other than that consultant one. Luckily that was, 
completely fine. He was like well behaved for most of them. But there was also a lot of just like, okay, Rowan, entertain yourself in your pram whilst I lie on this bed and have my genitals checked out. But he's a good sport, you know? And also all the staff were just absolutely lovely. And at one point he was being really fussy and needed to be held. And another member of staff like came in and was like, oh great, a baby and like held him and like calmed him down, which was excellent. And of course, as you can imagine, having painful sores on my vulva hasn't exactly been a recipe for good sexy times. And that is going to be a whole Hormone Diaries episode in itself about intimacy and relationships and sex postpartum like parenting and like having a kid and all of that but yeah you can probably gather from all of that that you know my genitals have been out of action for a while but in terms of my own lessons learned from this and something that I would love to impart on you we often have all sorts of things going wrong or going a bit different or like hmm what's that with our genitals and I just want to encourage all of you to please go to the doctor and get it checked out. Yes, it might then lead to this like months long referral, referral, appointment here, appointment there, like whole fiasco like this, but ultimately it is worth it. Chase up, follow up, do as much as you possibly can if somebody else can help you with that self-advocacy and that admin and like remembering all of these things please do it like show your genitals to as many professionals that you can in a consenting like medical professional treatment patient healthcare scenario not just like are you a doctor Pfft, whip your pants up don't do that not that and i hope that whatever it is that maybe you and your genitals are going through you can get some answers and get some treatment. Anyone else been through something like this post birth? Like this was completely unexpected for me. Like all the other stuff, I was like, okay, yeah, I know all of that happens postpartum, I'm ready. This, what on earth? Not prepared for at all. So if anyone is willing to share their own weird stories, either postpartum or not, of things that you're like, not expecting that, no one <laughs> prepared me for that whole genital fiasco, then yeah, please let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and letting me overshare with you all of this information. I hope that you and your genitals are doing well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.